Houston chiropractor, Dr. Gregory Johnson, and today we're going to take care of a mother and daughter uh, for each of their individual problems. So we're going to go ahead and do Katie first, which you've seen her in earlier videos, which she had migraine headaches most of her life, so we're going to treat her first. So let's have you face the mirror right there for me, Katie. And we always check the posture first, as you know, so let's flex your head forward and backwards. Now, you can see that she's got a little bit of forward head posture, which is where her head is forward of her shoulders. That makes her shoulders round. She gets a lot of stress right through here. That also adds to the subluxations in the cervical spine, especially the atlas that cause headaches. And she's doing a ton better now, though, than she used to. And I'll let her tell you about that in a little bit. Okay, so we've analyzed her posture now. The first thing we're going to do is decompress her on the y-axis. Now, when we treat her mother, Patty, she's got a very unique condition that we haven't talked about yet, so she'll be a brand new one for us. Katie's got a tan, she's Mount Sun. <laughs> Alright, see, so we always check the reflexes before and after. And there we go. Okay, nice. Excellent. Very good. Alright, now, we're going to do a Palmer Diversified Cervical adjustment here. Yeah, don't tilt your head way left. There we go. You're a little tight today, aren't you? Yeah. Okay. So, we just adjusted her on the y-axis, decompressing her. And now we're going to have her come over and lie on the other table, face down. So let's roll sideways and come over here. All right. Yeah, she knows the routine. Okay. Right leg is short by about a quarter of an inch and it gets even and that tightens up in her pelvis and low back. Right there, specifically. Which is her right sacroiliac joint. So we're going to adjust the right sacroiliac joint on the X and Z axes. This is the sacrum, which is the middle triangular shaped bone. And I adjust that straight superior to inferior. And then we're going to adjust her left, her right, no left, I mean, SI joint. And I'm actually going to hit this right one one more time. There. Now this is L5. Excellent. And L4. Three, and you always kind of go with the patient's breathing. There we go. Better. Good job. I'm going to let your head down just a little bit more if you can scoot up in there for me. There you go. I get to read a lot of t shirts every day. There we go, good. Sometimes you have to angle the patient's head down a little bit further to open the joints up. This is a good one. It says, I want to be the kind of woman who when my boots hit the floor in the morning, the devil says, oh no, she's up. <laughs> Which is great. You notice I'm putting quite a bit of pressure in her paraspinal muscles, and that's sore right there, huh? A little bit. Yeah. Oh. And these are along the vertebra on each side, and you want to make sure that you're on the muscle and not on the bone. There we go. Good. Now, we're 
we're going to use the new Johnsonator on her today. which parts of the spine are hypertonic or in more spasm than others because you'll see them plant right here. This is my human meat tenderizer. It's very good for what's uh, called myofascial pain. Gets in there and breaks up adhesions and fascia which is the covering of the muscle and we got a new high speed genie rub too that we do afterwards to improve the circulation as well you feel much faster this one's going yeah yeah i see she doesn't flinch near as bad when i use this one on that area but it still tickles, yep. Yeah. <laughs> some people get tickled, some get pain. Just depends on the person. lumbar spine, thoracic spine, and cervical spine. Legs are exactly even now. Is there any pain in your low back when I do this now? Mm, no, a little, little tightness, little tightness right, right here, down here. But not like it was. Yeah. She still has a little tightness right down in the lumbosacral sacroiliac region, which is where she's had some problems. So I'm going to dig my elbow in there a little bit harder. Yeah. Yep. These areas are usually very tender on females when they're having their menstrual cycle uh, and in fact this exact treatment helps ladies that are cramping and having trouble with their menstrual cycle which is called dysmenorrhea we're not treating dysmenorrhea we're treating the vertebral subluxations of the spine and the nerves that go to the female organs are affected which consequently improves the health of the organs at the end of those nerves. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. Now we're going to do that one more time and see if that helped that. Perfect. How's this feel this time? Better. Better. Good. All right. So let's set you up face towards your knee there. Oh. <laughs> you think you need to pull again? Um, yeah. That's you. Mm. Yeah. And we adjust her right shoulder. I'm sure you heard that one. And then the left shoulder. There we go. Perfect. Yeah, I bet you want me to do that on you too, huh, Patty? <laughs> see, that's what a normal shoulder should adjust like. And you'll see the big difference in Patty's shoulders, range of motion. Okay, now let's come back over here in front of the mirror and let me shoot you. Okay, here we go. See if I can make it. Nope, we're not playing basketball today. Okay, let's flex your hip forward and backwards. Much better range of motion. Your head's up a little bit more than it was, but here's her home 
therapeutic exercise right here. She's going to lift up with her traps, pull back with her rhomboids. Then we're going to bring her head straight back in the Z-axis and a little bit to the left. And then I'm adjusting the atlas on the X-axis right there in a mirror image so that we can send messages into her hindbrain or the cerebellum to retrain that to hold them in place as opposed to out of place. So let's do that one more time. Yeah, great. How'd that feel that time versus the first time? Smoother. Okay, good. All right, thank you very much. You're welcome. All right, now we're going to do Patty next. And you said how excited she is. All right, Patty. Let's see, check your posture here. First two. All right, now. Let's have you close your eyes and just flex your head forward. Now, see, she's got pulling in there. You can see that probably. Now, backwards. And it kinks a little bit right there. Now, normal. Take a deep breath in, please. Move it all the way out. So, she's got a little forward head posture, and also her whole head and neck have translated to the right on the x axis as well. Okay, and her pelvis is to the little left of the center as well. Okay, Patty, let's have you come over here on this other table first. We don't decompress Patty yet. Uh, we're working on a few different issues on her, specifically a condition called adhesive capsulitis, which is basically scar tissue formation in and around the shoulder joint in this case. Now in this position, her right leg is a half an inch shorter than her left leg. And you can see as I bring it up, it actually gets a half an inch longer. So see her pelvis raise up right there. You feel that tighten up right here, Patty? Oh yeah. Yeah. You'll always find, usually, unless a patient has an anatomical short leg, that the leg that's short will either get even or longer when the sacroiliac joint is out of place. So again, I'm adjusting her right sacroiliac, the sacrum straight down on the right side and left side, and then the left sacroiliac joint. And then I'm coming straight P to A in the Z axis on L5, L4, L3, L2, all the way up to L1. I'm sure you saw the different angle change on my arm. I'm not going to jump on you, so there you go. Just nice and easy. And we just, uh, just because she's been in such horrible pain with her shoulders, she's very tight. Let me let this down a little bit. There you go. In her upper thoracic and mid thoracic spine. So we have to do things a little different on different patients because of their problems. Now, let's just recheck her leg length. Now it's a quarter of an inch short, but it's still out of place, so we're going to still adjust her right sacroiliac a little bit there, sacrum here, no five there, and let's see if that did anything. Nope, she's still got a right leg that's short by a quarter of an inch, so we're going to dig deep into what I call the pocket, which is the L5 sacrum area. That's pretty sore, huh? Nice deep breath. There you go. Mm -hmm. And there. Yeah. These are the ones that hurt so good. Don't hurt me any, but sometimes the patients hurt more when I'm doing these because they've got toxins that have built up in those knots in your spine and pelvis that are called trigger points. And this is really sore right there, huh? Nice deep breaths. There you go. All right. Now, I don't use the Terminator Johnsonator on her just because it's a little too deep for her right now. So we do a little softer version. And 
still work on the same muscle groups, especially the outside tensor fascia lateral, what a lot of people call the IT band, hamstrings. And a lot of times when you see that the leg's still coming up short, it's because of the muscle hypertonicity in the pelvis and lumbar spine, which is what we're working on right now. Now because of her severe limited range of motion in her shoulders, which you'll see in a moment, as well as pain in there from the adhesive capsulitis, which is also known as bursitis in a lot of cases. We have sent her off for an arthrogram, which is where they inject a dye into the joint and then do an MRI on it. And it shows up all the soft tissue and cartilage that's in that joint. And that's how we picked up that she had significant scar tissue in both of her shoulders, left one worse. Okay. Yeah. She's still a quarter of an inch short on this. Do you still feel some low back tightness and pain when I do this here? Pat? Not as much, no. Okay. So she's still got just a tad over here on her right sacroiliac, which I'm adjusting again, and the sacrum. There. There we go. Yes. There we go. Just pretty normal. There you go. Sometimes when patients are so tight and, and it's painful to get adjusted, they need a procedure called manipulation under anesthesia. In Texas, we used to be able to do those in the hospitals, put the patient under and adjust them while they're in anesthesia. But now, we have to refer them off to an orthopedic doctor that does that, which we are going to do for Patty. Because if I was to try to manipulate her shoulders or adjust her shoulders it would be way too painful for her and it's a much more difficult process because the scar tissue actually needs to be ripped loose which is what will happen during the MUA but she won't feel it because she's going to be anesthetized euthanized. not euthanized <laughs> anesthetized we don't euthanize our elderly here our parents <laughs> okay, now let's turn you on your back, Porsche. And you notice how she's got some different uh, guarding motions because of her pain. So she has to move around differently just to avoid having as much pain. And she used to have a lot of pain in her neck, too. But she's letting go of that. And those are adjusting very well. There we go. Yeah. Now I'm going to check her leg legs here. Supine. And it's exactly even, but I am still going to, there we go, adjust the entire right leg. I should have felt that all the way up in your hip, did you? Mm -hmm. Okay, let me help you up. There we go. Okay, I'm going to take this real slow, okay? There we go. Now, you will be able to tell. We just have her deep breathe in and then breathe out as we're coming around. But starting right here, right there, she's getting quite a bit of pain in circumduction of her right shoulder. Forward's not as bad, is it, Patty? No. But see, when we get back here, this is right where his pain starts, isn't it? Yes. So I don't do this too much on her because it's just too painful so we're gonna let her get her MUA done by an orthopedic surgeon first and then follow it up with rehabbing her shoulder 
joint as well as the muscles and ligaments so that she doesn't develop more scar tissue because the same thing could happen again post MUA unless you move down. See, this is a lot harder to move, wasn't it? That's yeah. more painful too, wasn't it? Yes. Would you mind telling our YouTube uh, viewers how your shoulders have been feeling over this past several months and uh, what this is all done? Uh, well, uh, Shortly after Christmas, I noticed that I was having difficulty uh, getting dressed, uh, combing your hair, combing even. my hair, shaving my arm, a deodorant. It was very extremely. Uh, I was to this level, um, could hardly do this, couldn't sleep on my side, back. I mean, it was, it was everything. Was everything. The pain would run down my arm, and then I would. Uh, and then it would subside, then it would come back. It was very, it was, it was a, it was affecting my driving. And your quality of life. My quality of life. And I yeah. knew I had to come see Dr. Johnson and find out why I was having such difficulty in just the basic everyday things going. All right. Um, so since I've been to see Dr. Johnson, I've been able to uh, improve my ability to drive, close my car door, uh, just a, a variety of different things have improved. She's still got a lot of crepitus and pain in still there. Still pops, still, uh, hurts. still hurts, but it is probably a good 70% improved with the adjustments and the procedures we've done. We appreciate you telling them that. and We'll see you next time. This is your Houston chiropractor, Dr. Gregory Johnson.